Hello and welcome to the Duquesne Sports pregame show here on Duquesne Student Television. I'm Jack Morgan, joined by Dylan Fister, and we got a good one coming up tonight. It's Duquesne and Richmond. Richmond sitting at the top of the standings in the A-10. They are 14-1 and one in conference. Their only loss came to the Duquesne Dukes at the Coop just this past month. It's going to be a big game for both sides, and it might help decide the number one seat in the A-10 tournament. Dylan, what are you looking for uh, in terms of Richmond trying to bounce back from that loss? Well, the first thing that I noticed, Jack, when I was I was just looking at the stats, just kind of preparing for the show, I noticed that Richmond just is, is ranked super high in the A-10 in almost all offensive categories, yeah. yet they scored their third fewest points all season against the Dukes when they played. Like you mentioned, they lost 59-72. to 72. That's definitely not typical for a team that is – First in the A-10 in scoring offense, first in team field goal percentage, first in team three-point percentage, and first in three-pointers made. They average nine three-pointers a game. That is That's miles crazy. ahead of anybody <laughs> else crazy. in the Atlantic 10 and also miles ahead the Duquesne Dukes. Now, not only can they shoot, they don't let their opponents shoot. They're also second in the A-10 in opponent field goal percentage. So, I mean, this team is lethal. And to be honest with you, I said to Jack before the show, I don't know how the Dukes beat Richmond the first time around. <laughs> Watching and looking back, we can definitely <laughs> take some notes and go, okay, this is what happened. But on paper, the Spiders are just such a dominant force, and I, I really can't see them losing this game. Yeah, man, a couple reasons why Duquesne did come out on top. In that one, they shot 46% from the field to only 33% from Richmond, and Duquesne really is good defensively. Duquesne has some good defenders, and they play aggressive defense. Dan Bird has emphasized that the energy needed all year. After that Delaware loss, we brought this up in the last pregame, but it, it bears mentioning how low it felt when they lost that game to Delaware. And then when they lost the game to Little Rock, I mean, it felt like they hit their absolute low. And you know what? Some might say, some might have said, you know what? It, this it's throw throw the talent it, where it's done, but also another way to look at it was genuinely could it have gotten worse from that? It couldn't have gotten worse, so it could only get better. And Duquesne certainly has gotten better since that moment. Yeah, they definitely have, Jack, and maybe not so much when it comes to that star power. The Dukes haven't really shown what they were expected to, you know, with Megan McConnell and Tess Myers preseason polls having them flying off the board with numbers, but that really hasn't been the story of the Dukes this year. While both players, Tess and Megan, have had fantastic years, both hitting the 1,000-point mark, having historic seasons for themselves, it, it again, it hasn't been that individual star power that's, that's been creating these wins for the Dukes. It's been, a, it's been a big team effort. And, I mean, you have players like Nael Bernard leading the team in threes. Precious Johnson with the highest field goal percentage on the team. Amaya Hamilton is averaging almost 10 points a game. You know, yeah. it, it really has been that group effort <clears throat> coming in. And, like, we, we started – we talked about those slow starts for the men's team, and it's the same for the women. Whether it's a slow start to the season or a slow start to the game, they both seem to come out a little bit slow and not looking like themselves. But in the back half of games and this season, we've seen the Duquesne women's basketball team really come together. And I think we're going to see them do that again in this game, another hard-fought game. Because that first time around against Richmond, it was another one of those games where they had a lot of different players scoring 10-plus points. So I think, like you said, Jack, we have seen them turn around, and I think for those same reasons, they can they can compete with Richmond. Absolutely, and in that game, there are four players for the Dukes in double figures. Uh, Jeremy Kiaku was the leading scorer for both sides with 18 points. She was impressive. And also in the last game against GW, and yeah, that was on Education Day, a lot of screaming <laughs> in the stands stayed cool. And she actually really played a good game. But also at the same time, uh, Duquesne did give up, give up a lot of points in that first half, especially to GW. And in the whole game, they were really didn't look as good defensively. Now, uh, Nia Richardson did hit some big shots. She had over 29 points, by the way. Fantastic game from her. And you gotta you gotta give a lot of credit to her, but also at the same time, Duquesne, Duquesne can be better defensively. They're gonna have to be better defensively against a team like Richmond on the road. Yeah, they definitely have to be. And they in the A10, they have ranked about middle of the pack defensively. But like like you said, that first time around against Richmond, I mean, defensively they were just lights out. And 
that's what they're going to have to do again. I mean, D Richmond has three players in the top 20 scores in all of the A10. But that first time around, I mean, they they held two of them under 10 points. And I think they need another performance like that against Richmond to compete in this one. Absolutely. It's going to be tough for Duquesne to really control a game like they did last time. They did control last time. Maybe that's something they can build off of. It's going to be it's going to be a tough one. It's yeah. Be, you know what uh, Keith, uh, Keith Dambrot says? It's going to be mud wrestling. He say, he does talk a lot about mud wrestling. It's probably going to be the same way for Duquesne if they want to win this game. You said it before we came on, and I think you might have said it in the show so far. They can't outshoot. They can't go point for point, bucket for bucket with Richmond, most likely. And, I mean, they really didn't do that last time to win, so that's even more of the case. They can't go bucket for bucket with them, especially on the road. By the way, a little fun tidbit, Richmond's undefeated on the road. <laughs> They're 13 and up. Or sorry, at home rather. They're thirteen and zero at home this year. I mean, it's ridiculous, but true. And that I mean, for the record, they are also incredible on the road in conference play. Their one loss, like we said, came against Duquesne. But I mean, against a team that's so good and so comfortable at home, you got to break them out of their rhythm. Rhythm if you're Duquesne. You're right, Jack, and that's exactly what they did last time when the Dukes were at home. Like you said, didn't go for shot for shot with them, but they were able to out hustle them mainly in part to someone you mentioned a couple minutes ago, Journey Kiaku, who went off against the Spiders at home for the Dukes last time. She had uh, combined 5 of 10 f from the field, and then she was eight. She had eight free throws, combining for 18 points. And when I say hustle, I mean hustle for this girl. I felt like every time I looked up, she was just driving down into the paint. <laughs> and whether she was getting fouled to get those free throws or just dropping one in, she was putting the Richmond Spiders on skates all game, and that was what led to that victory for them. The Dukes weren't putting up all these three-pointers and just shutting down that attack. It really was that that hustle from them. And that's what we've seen from players like Megan McConnell, Tess Myers, and Maya Hamilton. That's what you get with this team. You get hustle from the Dukes. And they're going to need a lot of that on Wednesday. Kiaku is really good at getting into the paint and really just being able to – cut through the defense and just really just surgical with it too. She's really good at finding those um, those open lanes. And through that, she's also able to get shooters open like Amai Hamilton, Tess Myers, Nay Bernard, Megan McConnell. That's for, for Duquesne. They've really started to turn it around over the last, you know, I guess since the new year in terms of shooting the ball. Tess Myers had a tough time getting it going though. She's going to have to really get things going again. And she did get things going last time out against Richmond. That was part of the reason why they came out on top. She's going to have to do that again tonight. Yeah, and I definitely think she will. But it's it's interesting you said that, Jack, because you're right. Tess definitely has not had the season that she's had years prior. But at the same time, she's tied with now Bernard leading the team in three-pointers. So, again, that was it was a part of the success. It's, a, it's always been a part of – the, this team's success has been Tess Myers banging in from three, and I'd definitely be interested to see her do it against Richmond. I don't know if she'll be able to do it at the level she was doing it the first time around, but it'll surely be interesting to watch because you can never count out Tess Myers. Absolutely, and we're going to go towards the players to watch for both sides. We'll start with you, Dylan, and with the Duquesne Dukes, who we watching out for. Once again, I we've been talking about her the whole show, Jack. Journey Kiaku, I think she's going to have the same effect, and I think if the Dukes pull this one out, it's going to be through her, and it's going to be through other players like Precious Johnson, driving into the paint, getting physical, drawing those fouls, and making the free throws. Absolutely, and I think for Duquesne, it's going to be Megan McConnell, and she really has taken on that role of leading this team. You've seen a couple times in timeouts or heading into those media timeouts, she's really been leading the huddle, and when they're walking towards the huddle, she pulls one of the players aside that and is really just talking with them, trying to make them better on the court, and really just leading this squad, and she's going to have to continue to do that. She's been fantastic this year, and then the last time – Last time they played against Richmond, Duquesne, uh, she had 11 points. The more important stat was that she had 14 rebounds. She had, she had 14 rebounds. She's the point guard. She really crashes the boards, and Duquesne does that well, especially with players like Precious Johnson and um, Townsend. I mean, we're, as a whole, Duquesne does a great job on the offensive glass and 
on the defensive glass as well. And I think Meg McConnell's going to have to have to be that all-around player she was the first time the Duquesne Dukes took down the Richmond Spiders. And she's going to need to do that in order for them to take them down a second time this year. Move on towards the Spiders. Uh, who are you looking out for? I definitely think the Spiders are going to need those, those big threes coming in. They're going to have to make their shots that they always have been making all year, except obviously they haven't made them against the Dukes, but now they're going to have to make them because, like you said, Jack, Megan McConnell, I mean, she's, she's top 20 in scoring. She's third in the A-10, I believe, in rebounding. It, it's, again, another one of those hustlers that the Dukes have. So they're going to have to kill that intensity that the Dukes bring with some really nice shots, and that's going to come through – I believe Maggie Dugan and Rachel Olstrom, who are top three in scoring for this team, for this Spiders team, both were held under 10 points last time against the Dukes, going two of 10 and three of 10. That's not typical for them, and I don't think it's going to happen again. I think they light it up a little bit and give the Dukes a run for their money. Absolutely, and Grace. I think Grace Townsend is one I'm going to go with for Richmond. Uh, in conference play so far, she's averaging 15 points per game. And also with uh, a team leading, or sec, sorry, she's second on the team in rebounds per game with five and five, a little under five and a half. But she's really been at that um, leading scorer for the Spiders over the past, you know, handful of games, 15 games in the conference that they've played. And I think she's going to have to do that again. She wasn't at, she didn't have as good of a game last time against Duquesne, only putting up 11 points, but she did it on an efficient 50% shooting clip, and she's going to have to do that today for the Dukes, um, for the Spiders, rather, to take down the Dukes at home and keep that perfect record. So let's take a look at our final score predictions, and Dylan, we'll start with you. Where's your? Uh, where do you see this game going? I think she will do that, and I think the rest of the Spiders will follow in her footsteps, and I think they're going to knock down a bunch of shots. I see the Richmond Spiders beating the Duquesne Dukes 70-66 to 66 in a close one. I think that Duquesne is well-rested. They, they had a week off, and um, as Coach Danberg called it, they had a bye week. And... Um, you know, it's been a while for the for the Spiders since they've had off, and now that I'm looking at, it, they haven't. They haven't even had off for like a week for a week like Duquesne has all season. They come off a game on Saturday against George Mason on the road. They're coming back home. They're gonna have to face a tough Duquesne team. I think Duquesne gets it done. I really do. And I think Duquesne wins this one. In a close one, up until the final few minutes, I think Dan Bird has the team going in the right direction. I think they have he has them going in the right direction of a 68-61 to win on the road against Richmond, a season-defining win, if there ever was one, to beat the best team in the conference on the road. Season-defining in my eyes. We'll see if that happens, though. This game tips off 6 p.m. tonight from the Robin Center in Richmond, Virginia. Enjoy the game. This has been it for the Duquesne Sports Pregame Show. I'm Jack Morgan with Dylan Fister saying so long.